guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at finding the volume of prisms and cylinders. As we're looking at volume, what we're talking about is the space inside of one of these three-dimensional solids or what it would take to fill one of these up. And as we're looking at prisms and cylinders, the volume formula is going to be exactly the same. In order to find the volume of one of these prisms or one of the cylinders, what we're going to do is we're going to take the area of the base times the height of the object. So whether it's a prism or if it's a cylinder, formula is exactly the same, but how we approach finding that area of the base may be a little bit different. So as we're looking at finding the volume of this rectangular prism, remember our volume formula is area of the base times the height. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the area of the base of our prism. So we're looking at a rectangle on bottom. So in order to find the area of that rectangle, there's two ways to think about it. Length times width or base times height. Either way, we're looking at the 5 inch measurement and the 4 inch measurement. So if we take 5 times 4, we end up with 20 as the area of our base. And then if we look at the height, we've got the 3 inch length as our height. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that area of the base times that height. So we're going to take our 20 times 3 and end up getting 60. Now we do need to throw a label on this. Since we're dealing with inch measurements, we're going to put inches on the end. But as we're dealing with volumes, volume gets cubic units. So on that inches, we're going to put a cubed power. So it's 60 inches cubed as the volume of our prism. As we're looking at this prism, this one is a triangular prism, but we're still going to use the same exact formula, area of the base times the height. Since we have triangular bases, we'll have to adjust how we find the area of that base. In order to find the area of a triangle, we go one half base times height, and the base and the height of a triangle have to be perpendicular. So as we're looking at our triangle on the top, the four foot length and the 11 foot length make the right angle. So we're going to go one half times four times 11. Well, half of 4 is 2, and 2 times 11 is 22. And then if we're looking at the height of our prism, that's going to be our 6-foot length. So in order to find this volume, we're going to take our 22 times the 6. When we do that, we get 132, but then we need to label our answer. Our measurements were given to us in feet, and this is volume, so we put a cubed on it. So 132 feet cubed as our volume. If we take a look at this third example, we've got a cylinder. Again, our volume formula hasn't changed, but since we changed the base shape, now we're dealing with circles. Again, we'll have to adjust how we find the area of that base. So in order to find the area of a circle, we go pi times the radius, which in this case is 6 centimeters squared. So if we take 6 squared, that's 36. And then if we take 36 times pi, I'm going to round that to two decimals. When we do that, we get 113.10. And then for our height, we've got that 8 centimeter length. So now if we multiply those things together, 113.10 times 8, I'm going to type that into my calculator. We end up getting about 904.8. And then we need to throw a label on this. Our measurements were given to us in centimeters. So this is centimeters cubed. So 904.8 centimeters cubed. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.